Daily Broadside, day 425. I've never trusted an astronaut. I don't trust them at all. I don't like the fact that the predominance of them are all, they live to be like 97 years old, perfect health until the end. Uh, you know, they're Eagle Scouts, Congressional Medal of Honor, never had a speed ticket, you know, kiss babies, love grandmas. I mean, it's just, they're just too perfect of a, of a thing. And not to mention their physical fitness is just like, you know, um, Michael Phelps level, you know, crazy, right? And they're just, you know, like you want, you want one uh, astronaut to be a drug addict just so you can go, aha, so y'all are human, right? But that never happens. Anyway, and I'm not wishing anybody to be a drug addict. I, that was a theoretical proposition. Um, it would be nice if we just no, didn't have any drug addicts. That would make everything a little bit smoother. But anyway, 1969, the Apollo 11 a moon landing. And uh, you can delve into that with it, what you want. But uh, there are some discrepancies that make me ponder whether or not that happened. And the whole Stanley Kubrick... Um, uh, it, anyway, there's there's some conspiracy stuff out there for for your uh, delving. And uh, 1969, they, they go off, and it's uh, Buzz Aldrin, who I don't particularly care for. Buzz Aldrin's real name is Edwin Eugene. And as dumb as Edwin and Eugene are as names, you chose Buzz. I would not be going by Buzz. The only Buzz I know is uh, the guy that played, I think played Carolina, coached basketball at App State, somewhere else. Um I got a rule, I don't name my children and I refuse to be named uh, Onomatopoeia, okay? I, that's just dumb, it's just stupid, right? Um, anyway, Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, who died in like 2012, 2013. Buzz, I think is still alive. And then the lesser known Michael Collins, right? Not the Irish guy, but the astronaut. I think Michael Collins just recently left the earth again, theoretically. Um, you know, back in like 2020 or something like that. And uh, they all live to be like 8,700 years old and all this stuff. But Michael Collins, and I realized that they knew their roles when they left. Michael Collins was the command pilot for the Columbia Space Module, and he basically just kind of floated over the lunar surface while those two yahoos went down gallivanting across the lunar surface. And to me, you know, I'd have been like, yeah, I'll be the pilot, and then i get in the air, I'd be like, listen here, Buzz, you're going to be the pilot. I'm going down there to get all the women when I get back because ain't nobody going to remember Michael Collins. They're going to know Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, and that's where the bitches will flock like honey, right? <laughs> but uh, so he doesn't. He stays up there. And to me, that's like calling up two of your buddies and be like, hey, man, we're going to go to the, the Grand Canyon. We're going to the Grand Canyon. It's going to take us a couple days to get there. When we get there, you just stay in the car. Uh, me and Peter are going to go over there and look over the rim, collect some rocks. I think he collects like 47 pounds of lunar rock, theoretically. Uh, you know, and all this stuff. You wait in the car, and uh, don't worry about what's in this big hole over here, right? I, that's just strange to me that that, that was a thing. Uh, but they did it, and uh, we don't know who Michael Collins is, uh, unless you're just really geeky into, like, science and space and whatnot, which it is a, a, the absolute most fascinating thing on Earth not on earth but in the space that surrounds earth but uh yeah uh when i was or when my son my youngest son was probably five or six we we're sitting there one night laying in bed watching the uh, nba playoffs and uh this would have been you know several several years ago and uh the national anthem comes on and i'm just sitting there waiting for the game to start and all and i look over he's standing up in the bed with his hand over his heart while the national anthem plays and i'm like so I stand up and do the same thing. And so that kind of became a thing. And I was like, man, it's such the little things that make you so proud to be a parent, you know? I didn't tell him to do that, but uh, you know, he was, he was, he got that, he picked that up somewhere. I thought that was kind of cool to you, uh, listen to the National Anthem. Cause who does that when you watch it on TV? I mean, obviously live is a completely different animal, you know? The Golden Girls came on from 1985 to 1992. And Rose Nyland, Blanche Devereaux, uh, Sophia Petrillo and somebody else. I can't remember their character name, but uh, you know, they go on the uh, the show there and they're three widowers and a divorcee, okay? Share a house in Florida. And one of the dumb things that I do is uh, I look up stupid stuff like uh, sitcom floor plans because I was like, couldn't wrap my head around like, how's this house laid out, you know? And uh, I do it with the office too. Like, I cannot, like, make everything spatially relate in the office. So I, I look it up and then you look at it and you're like, okay, so, all right, anyway. 
But uh, you look at that house and it's freaking huge. And I don't know if it's common for four women uh, in their, you know, 90s to live together uh, like that with one of them's mom, you know, because I think it was Maud's house, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, but I say that to say this. Um, originally, there was a character called Coco who was a gay cook. And Coco, the gay cook, which, uh, leave it to the 80s to name a gay character some stupid cliched name. I mean, I can't, why couldn't he be like... Peter, I already said Peter today, Stan, you know, a Randy, Randy the gay cook, well, what was wrong with that, Coco, you know, name him like a clown or a bozo or a, not a bozo, but a clown or a monkey or something, Coco the monkey, another Seinfeld reference there, but, uh, but they, they, they got rid of him, uh, he was supposed to be like, you know, because so much of their activity went on in the kitchen table, so he was going to be their, like, intermediary between, but then Sophia comes on there and does so well with fans in one episode, I don't understand that kind of um audience that they have you know uh, judging this stuff but they get rid of coco and then later on coco gets rid of himself because somewhere outside of salem oregon coco goes like to a park with his dog and then disappears and so they're like where's coco i don't remember his name and uh they find coco's dog which may or may not have been dead i can't remember and then coco is found a short distance away and down a 30 foot embankment they ruled it as an accident now i find it odd that you would accidentally fall uh while your dog was left in the car which leads me to a couple questions well would you leave your dog in the car for it to die uh or would you take the dog with you if it was an accident i mean most people when they take their dog to the park the dog gets out of the car with them so i don't know what happened there nobody does but uh coco's no longer with us and he was no longer with the show after the first episode it's, it's, this story has no meaning whatsoever. Good day.